Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial we're just going to take a bit more of a look at view groups and we're going to look at nesting view groups to create a slightly more complex um, structure for our views. So um, at the moment I've got this application and if I touch the right points on this image it will let me through to the next screen here and I can see the notes that I've saved. Um, but what I'd like is I'd like a, a, a lock button by the side of this save button so that if I click the lock button it goes back to the lock screen and um, back to the uh, initial image and uh, to do that I can nest one view group within another so if I go back to um, the uh, activity main.xml which is uh, that's what's laying out this screen at the moment we've got a linear layout here and one button within it and I can actually, this linear layout is a, is a view group and I can actually have another view group within this, within this linear layout to enable me to lay out two buttons side by side and to have nested um, view groups is, um, is not efficient so um, it's better not to nest view groups if you can but this is kind of a simple way of doing uh, of laying things out that you can always rely on because um, linear layout was I think it was way back in the first version of Android or something so um, it's always going to be there and you can always use this technique and you can create quite complex layouts like this but it's better to use as I say a single layout if you can um, so um, what I'll do is um, I'm going to put a new linear layout here linear layout and I'm going to take this button cut it control X and just paste it in between these linear layout tags here and just do control shift F to format that and let's copy the button and let's have a second button underneath it and the second button I'm going to give an ID of lock lock and I'm going to make the text on it say lock as well and I'm just going to select that and go to right click go to quick fix extract uh, Android string and the ID can be locked that's fine and I click OK and that, that will now if I, if I look at strings XML I'll now have this lock string there which is what I want so I'm using that string for the text on my button and now this uh, inner, inner linear layout here um, I want to, the size of it, um, I have to attend to first. So I don't need the these XML schema thingamajigs here, namespace, what's it. I don't need those on my um, inner linear layout. I just need them on the outermost one, the outermost view group here. But this view group here, I need to tell it how much size to take up. And I'm going to say um, layout width equals match parent so take up all horizontal width possible and layout height I'm going to say wrap content so just be big enough to contain the height of those two buttons and then the orientation I'm going to say um, horizontal and I'll just do control shift F again to format that so um, now it's going to lay out the two buttons the two views within it next to each other horizontally now the buttons themselves, um, the layout, uh, the layout height is good. I want the buttons to be just high enough to wrap their contents, which is the text that they display. But the layout width um, is is no good. I don't. If each one matches the parent width, each one would take up the whole width of the linear layout, and we would only see one button because the other would get hidden behind it. So um, I'm going to set the layout width here actually to naught. DP, um, not divide independent pixels and the reason for that is I'm going to tell it um, when you look at the layout width here don't actually bother calculating anything just make it not pixels wide and forget about it so that's kind of an efficiency thing and the real thing that's going to actually size the buttons is going to be a weight so within the linear layout here I can use a weight and remember this is a horizontal linear layout so the weight that I specify here will determine how the horizontal width is parceled out between the buttons 
So I'm going to say here weight, layout underscore weight, and I'm going to give each one the same weight. And the weight is not an absolute value, it's just the weight of the two buttons is relative to each other. So if I give if I give this one a weight of 10 and this one a weight of 30, this one's going to take up three times as much space as this one. And so this will be one quarter of the space actually and this three quarters. Um, but if I give them the same weights, then they're each going to take up half the space horizontally. Did I say vertically? Well, I mean horizontally anyway. So we're dealing with horizontal space here because this is a horizontal uh, linear layout that encloses them. Um, so um, here I'm just going to say, uh, I could make it like 0 0.5, but um, let's make it 50 because then we can imagine that that's a percentage. Although, as I say, uh, it's not, not absolute. It's just the relative values that matter. And I'll paste that in there as well. So each one takes up half the horizontal space. And um, now if I run this, uh, hopefully we're going to see two buttons down here. And uh, I'm going to, um, after this, after I've recorded this tutorial, I'm going to make the lock button here actually work. And I'm, to, to do that, I'm going to use stuff that I've already showed you how to do, so I won't bore you with it further. And I'll leave it as an exercise to you if it interests you. Um, but all I'm going to do is add a listener to the lock button and I'm going to make that listener um, create an intent and pass that to start activity so that it starts the uh, image kind of lock screen activity. It starts my other activity. So it's pretty simple. And here's my application and I click the saved points. And it checks the points and lets me in. And here's my lock button, which doesn't do anything at the moment, but it will shortly. So that's it for this tutorial, and until next time, happy coding.